Hi ST fans and welcome back. Land based or liverboard? Some divers can't wait to take to the high seas for a week or two. Others like to have their feet on firmer ground. In this video I'll be taking a look at the pros and cons of land based diving versus liverboard. For those here for the first time, my name is Mark. I'm the editor in chief of the Scuba Diver Media brand. And welcome to the Scuba Diver YouTube channel. Take two seconds and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And ring that bell so you get notification of the latest releases. Want some free stuff? Everyone loves free, right? Check out the description below for all sorts of goodies, like a free digital subscription to any of our magazines. Where we can, we'll link you to the destinations or equipment we talk about in the support our channel section in the description. For transparency, we'll earn a small commission each time you purchase after clicking on one of those links. And this will go directly back into making more content for you to enjoy. Now, let's dive into the video. A question I often get asked at dive shows or in emails to the magazine is, which is better, land-based or liverboard? And this is a difficult one to answer, as it isn't as clear-cut as you might think. Personally, I love liverboards, but there are certain places around the world where you can opt for a liverboard, and yet I think a land-based resort is actually the better option. Here are some of the pros and cons of land-based diving versus being on a liverboard. If you are one of those poor souls who get seasick at the mere mention of the word ocean, then you might think liverboards are not for you. Period. However, there are a vast array of liverboards around the world, and with the wonders of modern anti seasickness medication, there are some locations and itineraries which you could probably get away with. I've been to the Bahamas on the liverboard catamaran Aquacat many, many times. And on my last trip a few years back, several of my fellow passengers had previous when it came to seasickness. But by taking their pills on a regular basis, they found that the dreaded feeling stayed away for the most part, only surfacing on the one open sea crossing in the trip between the Exumas and the Luthra. The Aquacat and other cats of the same ilk, such as the Four Seasons Island Explorer in the Maldives, uh, Mike Ball Spoil Sport in Australia, and even the monster trimaran Q and Law in the British Virgin Islands often provide a far more stable platform than a single hull vessel, but only in places where the sea is reasonably calm. When it gets rough, then a catamaran will rock and roll just as much, if not more, than a monohull boat. Also, several of the boats I've mentioned above also stop at, or have tender trips to, land during their itineraries, which means that if you find you are suffering slightly, you can get off the boat from time to time and spend a few hours on terra firma. Unless you have the sturdiest sea legs, I wouldn't suggest trying somewhere like the Cocos Islands, Malpelo or the Galapagos Islands, as these involve long crossings across open sea that can often be subject to huge swells and inclement weather. However, if you are up to extended periods at sea, you will enjoy some of the most spectacular diving on the planet. Only a handful of liverboards venture to these exotic locations, often booking up months, if not years, in advance. In fact, this is one of the main reasons I love liverboards. They give you the opportunity to dive in places away from, or out of reach of, all the day boats. Hence why, when I head for Egypt, for example, I like nothing better than to board a liverboard and take off to the Brothers or some other offshore marine park. This same rationale applied when I boarded the Dewey Nusantara for its maiden voyage around North Sulawesi. Only a few other liverboards operate in this area, so apart from the odd site in the Lembe Strait and the Banaki Marine Park that were within dayboat range, we pretty much had every dive site to ourselves. Sheer bliss. The Socorros, often referred to as the Mexican Galapagos, are another location that is only visited by a handful of liverboards. Climb on board a vessel such as a Socorro Aggressor and you can be spending time with mantas, sharks, whale sharks and all manner of marine creatures with only the people on board the boat with you as company in the water. 
It is possible, however, to get this away from it all feeling and still be based on land. Head for somewhere like Bonaire, the self-styled shore diving capital of the world, and you can bimble around in your pickup truck with your dive gear stored in the back until you find a dive site with no other cars in sight. Get your kit on and wander into the water and you can dive as long as you want and with no one else around. Bonaire is the obvious choice when it comes to shore diving as it has 80 plus dive sites in a relatively small area but nearby Curacao also boasts several shore dive sites such as a unique car pile and laid back Dahab in Egypt is famed for its fabulous shore diving including the iconic Blue Hole and the Canyon. Of course there are places around the world where you can also reach world-class dive sites via dayboat. So if you don't want to give up the creature comforts of a hotel resort, but you still want to hit the best diving, seek out those destinations. Reefy Beach, an island resort in the Bar Atoll of the Maldives, is just a 40-minute dony ride away from the acclaimed Don Fantilla, which attracts grey reef sharks, skews of fusiliers, masses of reef life, and of course, manta rays which turn up in droves during the southwest monsoon to hover over the many cleaning stations on top of the tiller. Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt is another resort that offers stunning sights within dayboat range and you have a range of accommodation available, from small two-star hotels to sprawling five-star resorts. The Straits of Tehran and the current swept Gordon Jackson Thomas and Woodhouse reefs and the magnificent Ras Mohammed Marine Park are both less than two hours away. And if you don't mind a ridiculously early start, you can even access the wreck of the Thistlegorm, undoubtedly one of the world's premier wreck dives. Jumping off a liverboard onto the Thistlegorm might be the easiest option, but once you start exploring the vast holds full of motorcycles, trucks, rubber boots, Lee Enfield rifles, airplane parts and masses of ammunition, even that oh my god it's early feeling will disappear rapidly and you'll be glad that you set your alarm clock. Shore diving does offer plenty to recommend it. You are not tied to a rigid schedule and you can get up and dive as little or as much as you want. Eight dives a day? No problem. A couple in the morning and a siesta in the afternoon? You got it. With shore diving, especially in places such as Bonaire and Roatan in the Honduras Bay Islands, you're your own boss. Buddy Dive Resort on Bonaire even has a drive through air station where you can grab full tanks and drop off empty cylinders and Cocoa View in Roatan has a picturesque shipwreck just off the end of their dock a short swim away and this can be dived anytime, day or night. On a liverboard offering four or five dives a day, by the very nature of the itinerary, things have to run on a tight schedule. No one is forcing you to do all the dives on offer, but most people who embark on a liverboard want to feel they are getting their full value for money and so will want to log as many of the dives as possible. This can mean that you are being briefed for your next dive only an hour or so after returning from your previous dip. Hence why people refer to liverboards as dive, eat, dive, eat, dive, nap, dive, eat, dive, sleep and repeat. This can all be a bit much for some people. There are places where you can bang out a fair old number of dives from a day boat and hit many if not all of the sites offered by liverboards operating in the area. The Cayman Islands is a prime example. All the sites visited by the liverboard are just a short distance off land, so they're all accessible by dayboat. And in these instances, why give up the comfort of a large, comfortable room and all the amenities that come with it in a land-based resort in favour of living on a boat? Ocean Frontiers, which operates out of the east end of Grand Cayman, has been described as a land-based liverboard, thanks to the logical layout of its facilities. There are now places around the world where some enterprising souls have come up with the idea of combining a land-based holiday with a liverboard. Take the Maldives, for instance. You can have a week on board a luxury liverboard, followed by a week on land, uh, something like the Luxury Caredu Resort. This is the perfect mix if you have a hardcore diver travelling with a sometime diver. The former will lap up the non-stop diving action on the liverboard, and the latter will be able to chill out on the beach once they get to the resort. In Egypt, you can opt for a short three-day liverboard with Emperor divers, followed by time on land, which again can keep divers of different levels happy, as well as provide a great way for liverboard virgins to give it a go 
without opting for a full week on a boat and then finding that it's not their thing. So you can see it's not such a clean split between liverboard and day boat in our shore diving. The best option is to check out your chosen destination and then work out the optimum way to hit the dive sites that you want to do. If everyone has the sea legs, it's just a straightforward choice between land based and liverboard. Just see which one offers the style or amount of diving you want, along with the amenities and facilities that you're looking for. If you've never tried a liverboard, why not give one a go in 2021 or 2022? They're not just for experienced divers. We had divers with only their four open water diver qualifying dives under their belt on the Aquacat. And they provide a fantastic training ground, allowing divers to get 20 or more dives in their logbook in just a few days. Similarly, if you've been shunning land-based operations for a few years, why not return to the fold? Shore diving might not be as easy as falling off the back of a boat, but it offers a host of advantages, particularly if you don't want to play follow my leader behind a guide. What are some of your experiences when it comes to liverboards or shore-based diving? Leave your comments below and if you've got a question, fire away. Because if we can't answer it, maybe someone in our growing community will be able to. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget, you can grab a free digital magazine subscription in the description below. As always, stay safe. And if you're going diving soon, whether it's on land or liverboard, Enjoy!